the deluge of blockbuster releases is nearly upon us. Fall and winter remains a highly anticipated time of the year due to massively hyped games, especially with how many titles were delayed to this window and next-gen consoles coming up. Hype and skepticism go hand in hand though, and it's always good to scrutinize the big releases in advance. So, let's take a look at 15 of the riskiest pre-orders of the year. Marvel's Avengers Where do we even start? Despite the iffy reveal and games-as-a-service trappings, Marvel's Avengers looked somewhat more appealing in those War Table streams. Unfortunately, we were soured on the recent beta with its numerous bugs, repetitive mission design, lackluster enemies, boring loot, and unstable multiplayer. Forget about Spider-Man being exclusive to the PS4 and PS5 versions. Right now, we're worried about online play even being stable enough for launch. WWE 2K Battlegrounds WWE 2K21 isn't happening this year, but 2K Games still needs to milk the franchise. So while the flagship sim takes a break, Saber Interactive has been tapped to develop WWE 2K Battlegrounds. As an arcade-style wrestling game, the gameplay is looking alright, but considering Saber has never released a wrestling game, not to mention a looming shadow of excessive monetization, still has a skeptical. It's risky, but not as risky as Marvel's Avengers, which is saying a lot. Mafia Definitive Edition After lackluster definitive editions for Mafia 2 and 3, Hangar 13 has wisely taken its time with the Mafia Definitive Edition. This is more of a full-on remake with a new lighting engine, several cutscenes redone from the ground up, more story sequences and whatnot. While gameplay previews have us optimistic, there's still concern about bugs and performance at launch. Such issues have been plaguing the series for a while now, and as the previous two definitive versions have proven, horrible performance can be quite the hype killer. Star Wars Squadrons EA has made significant strides in its handling of the Star Wars license since the initial launch debacle of Star Wars Battlefront 2. Star Wars Squadrons appears to be another significant step in that process, launching for $40 with a campaign and microtransaction-free multiplayer. While the prospect of a spiritual successor to X-Wing and TIE Fighter is great, there are still plenty of concerns because, well, it's EA. Will the campaign even be compelling, especially given Battlefront 2's lackluster story? Will multiplayer offer decent netcode, balance, map design and whatnot? Are there really no microtransactions? Only time will tell. Watch Dogs Legion Providing the ability to recruit and play as any NPC with different approaches to missions sounds pretty cool. Unfortunately, such a system could end up being too ambitious for Ubisoft especially given the company's history with bugs, performance issues, and flawed design choices. It also doesn't help that Watch Dogs Legion features many of the same open-world trappings that one has grown tired of for years now. Assassin's Creed Valhalla You could apply a lot of the same concerns for Ubisoft's open-world approach to Assassin's Creed Valhalla as well. The prospect of building and upgrading a settlement where not conducting raids on suspecting villages is intriguing. The combat, side quest design, and story treatments don't show significant improvements over Assassin's Creed Odyssey, though. Even with returning stealth elements like blending into crowds and one-hit kills with a hidden blade, it still continues the action RPG gameplay of Odyssey and Origins. So if you've grown exasperated with that approach, you might want to hold off on Valhalla. Destiny 2 Beyond Light only Bungie could get in its own way when it comes to the launch of a major expansion. Beyond Light is already looking like a shaky enough proposition with its $50 cost, the highest for a Destiny expansion till date, especially when it adds only one new location and a story that's more of the same Monster of the Week routine. But then you factor in Bungie removing a ton of existing content from the game and bringing back older content like the Cosmodrome, while revamping entire gameplay systems, hoping that fifth time's the charm when it comes to getting things right. World of Warcraft Shadowlands World of Warcraft has been on the decline for years, starting around the time of Legion and spiraling downwards into oblivion with Battle for Azeroth. 
Shadowlands looks to revive interest by traveling to a completely new location with five big zones and different covenants. The problems start with the ridiculous setup of Sylvanas single-handedly defeating the Lich King, and a level squish which may face issues, especially considering how badly the stat squish fared. It also doesn't seem like the core gameplay systems and massive amounts of RNG will be improved anytime soon. Let's not forget the sheer number of bug and glitches that could crop up as well. Outriders Outriders is a cover-based looter shooter action RPG with co-op. But wait, it also has a pretty extensive story. Four different classes with numerous build possibilities, side quests, world tiers, end game activities, exploration, so on and so forth. While there's quite a bit to the game, it also feels like it's trying to emulate a number of other titles like Destiny, The Division, Remnant from the Ashes, and so on, rather than carving its own niche. Gameplay has looked fine so far, but Outriders seems to lack a certain spark. Not as risky as the other games on this list, but Outriders is still an iffy proposition. Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War Activision finally announced the next Black Ops, which is actually a direct sequel to the first game. Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War will feature character customization, dialogue choices, more open levels, and multiple endings, with Raven Software working on the campaign, which is good news after the mess that was Black Ops 3. Unfortunately, the game's monetization could be a problem, and no free next-gen upgrades along with paying $70 for the PS5 and Xbox Series X versions is suitably lame. Kingdom Hearts – Melody of Memory Could Kingdom Hearts – Melody of Memory end up being a decent rhythm game, even if it's banking purely on the series' huge collection of music and cutscenes? Sure, though some of the combat sequences look a little sus, but it's also offering more story content centered on Kyrie, taking place after the Kingdom Hearts 3 Remind, which could be a problem. After all, the ending for Kingdom Hearts 3 was already meh enough, and Remind did it no favors. Fingers crossed for something that's not just another cliffhanger. Godfall Counterplay Games Looter Slasher, their words, not ours, is a little weird. Combat has improved significantly since that initial gameplay leak, and it looks… fine. The enemies, loot, valor plates, and overall story are all fine, too. Nothing really stands out, though, which will be important, considering the game's status as a PS5 console launch exclusive. There's also the fact that counter players never made this kind of game before, so it wouldn't be strange for certain key features to be missing and added post-launch. NBA 2K21 If 2K games didn't garner a ton of hate for pricing the game $10 higher on the PS5 and Xbox Series X, then it certainly didn't earn marks for admitting that the next-gen versions would have more content. Of course, that price rise comes in the wake of no next-gen gameplay footage, a continued commitment to excessive microtransactions, and few details on the gameplay, beyond a new shot meter. At least it has cross-gen progression for my team. We suppose that counts for something. FIFA 21 Speaking of excessive microtransactions in a sports title, FIFA 21 is coming up. At the very least, EA Sports has provided details on what fans can expect, whether it's interactive match simulation and more features in career mode, over 17,000 players across 30 leagues and 700 clubs or some much-needed changes to Ultimate Team. However, even last year's title was touted to be a massive improvement, and well, it wasn't. None of this is going to stop FIFA 21 from being another smash hit, mind you, but it's worth a try. System Shock Initially, Night Dive Studios System Shock was marketed as a remake, it had a Kickstarter campaign back in 2016 and was earmarked for release in December 2017. Unfortunately, as time went on, delay after delay hit the game. Whether it was the move from Unity to Unreal Engine 4, development moving away from the original game's core ideas, feature creep, etc. Development restarted back in March 2018 with a 2020 release window, but it's doubtful if it will even ship by this year. The final product will speak for itself, but the development process doesn't make us too optimistic for the outcome. 
And that wraps it up. If you like what we're doing, please consider subscribing to our channel. We upload new videos daily, so make sure you don't miss them by subscribing. We appreciate your support and we thank you for checking us out.